everyone and welcome to another episode of Shavana Social. It's almost Father's Day. So I have some things to talk to you about regarding that. Also, I also wanted to thank everybody for their continued support. Um, it's really, really appreciated. My last video was a meditation where I was trying to sing, creating me a clean heart. And um, I just thought that doing, should I call it a series now? Or maybe when I reach the third post about it. Um, I just thought that during this time, all of us need, you know, some spiritual guidance or just somewhere where we can go and feel and, you know, meditate. So I started doing that in the peak of all the, what was going on before this, before, you know, we've been mixed with a pandemic and racial injustice and everything coming up to the forefront and all sorts of things and i just thought that we just needed uh, a little meditation um trying to play my part doing a little bit where i can so thank you for that support i saw the comments i appreciate them thank you so much i hope to get a vocal coach sometime <laughs> but yeah um and apart from that too, um, I want to say thanks for the support. It means so much. I'm growing and just to know that some you know people out there appreciate what I put out and giving me the uh, the advice you know how to grow my page, how to grow my video quality, how to grow in my content. And trust me, I'm working on them. Sooner, very soon, you'll see the changes. All right, so. Father's Day is just around the corner and um, I just wanted to share some memories I have of my dad who passed away um, four years ago, I believe. I know my siblings will let me know <laughs> of the correct date. Um, I have some stuff for him. I don't think I want to show it. yeah um so here's a story my dad he had this this deep this deep voice and i just he called me shamika that's a middle name and that would be my name like he was the only one i would like really let you know call me shamika because growing up i never really liked the name the Mika part of it because people normally will tease me and say that sounds like an African name and you, you know and the way the how how people were so ignorant during those times and then you was you were so gullible that you just take it up on yourself and you know start not really appreciating who you are but no all of that has changed. Um so people make fun of me on the name so I never really liked it but he was the one that would call me Shamika and um that was his name for me which is my rightful name or middle name so he lived in kingston and i lived in saint thomas which is country far east um so i would visit him summer holidays or christmas holidays but not really stay with him i would stay with my stepmom because we never really had that relationship even though i, I think i kind of had him up for some reason because he wasn't really in my life as much wasn't living with my mom and I didn't think that that was a family but I grew to to really understand him I'm gonna get to that point um so he would be happy that I was there I would help out with his shop his little stall that he had um learn more about his passion he loved music and the food and just to know that his kids were okay and they were happy and still connecting with each other and he would always have good tips for us and you know he was like a true jamaican 
man in a sense he was a country boy but his family came in from the it was a town boy but his family came from the country and i remember we would go to visit them but in it's so sad in a way that the the only reason or only way that we can meet many of our family members in Jamaica, maybe other countries as well, is when there's a a funeral. <laughs> so sad. But anyways, we had a funeral, and I ended up going up to most probably porous Manchester, and I met some of my family members. Like, when I saw them, I was like, oh, well, look like I'm going to go into my shit because my auntie them and cousin them are shape and boobs and them pretty. So, I'm going to my looks. <laughs> Anyways, we're still skinny now, but that's besides the story. But it was just a good time. And they would cook in some huge pots. The rice and the meat, all sorts of meat. And when we went there, they had the hypest, hippest phones and and technology while we're in Kingston like what we're doing here you know but it, you know just the experience that I learned a little bit of our family we never really had that that close knit like probably when my mom's side would um but I appreciated those moments I remember when um it was raining water gone and uh, we played water war with all the drum water and all the kids in the lane will come on the road and will play water where daddy jump water and we never ask permission, daddy never do home. And when everything finished now and daddy reach home, I realized no water in the jump. <laughs> all we could hear is Ricardo! <laughs> you know, those are bad words, but, <laughs> but just his voice alone, you ever watch like one of those movies maybe morgan freeman playing god or so you don't hear this powerful voice that was his voice yeah and he always wanted the best for us and um a few days a few days before his death um i met with him my sister and i we went we meet up there and and I helped clean up and you know talk to him and we had a moment to ourselves and that's when we both of us you could say both of us had that connection where I forgave him for not necessarily being in my life um, and I understand why I understand where he was coming from and his struggles and all of that we literally just spoke about everything um and i forgave him he couldn't walk he couldn't walk he couldn't walk that that the first time i visited him and this the second time i visited him he was so happy and it was just so weird because and then he was always slim but when I saw him that second time, he really drew down, like, to bones. But then he was so happy. He was like, we can't walk, no, and things are going to get better in the world itself. And he had this smile on his face. But then he still had a sunken, you know, the hole there in his head. But then, you know, just the the thought that he he's getting better and he's happy. And I think that was like two days, I don't remember if it was two days before or after my 21st birthday. And he was saying to me, enjoy yourself, you're getting bigger. Anything you put your mind to, you will get it. You are all. You are always smart. I know you're going to come out with something good. And I give thanks for your mother. She, she really grew you and your sister well. And your sister will thank them for always their own and just giving me all of this this life. And at, at that point, like everything else that I didn't really understand or forgive him for just went away. And that's when I started to see it, daddy. I started to see daddy. 
Then he died. But you know when it really hit me? It hit me like probably a week or two. Um, and then I never really you know, I realized that when you bottle things up, it don't make a difference. It don't really help. You're trying to be the strong one. Cry and let it pass. You know, you'll feel better in yourself. And um, so a few weeks after the funeral, I just couldn't hold it any longer. Close my room door. And just let it out. Remember the good times. What could have been. And kind of, I wasn't really say blaming myself, but just like, what would have happened if I had just forgiven him and you know had that relationship or tried to? It would have been much much better. But I know he's in a better place. I know he's happy. He's looking down on his kids and he's proud of them. My sister, my brother, good people, <laughs> good people. You know, if you if you just for, forgive yourself, you know, and try and understand people's uh, lack of term, people's way of life, how they do things, and not to try and fix people, <laughs> then you know, I think your life would be better. But he was a great man, always, you know, giving jokes and always pleasant, always trying to help with the little that he had. That's my dad. That's my twin. Mm -hmm. Only thing if I had a long face, that's, you know, could say that's definitely my twin. But yeah. Just want to say... If you're not having a good relationship with your father, I'm going to say father because it's Father's Day coming around the corner. You try and put out the effort and try to rekindle and reconnect because you never know when you'll miss that chance. You don't get the chance to, you know, to have a relationship. Put your pride aside, even though you may be the child, and just try and mend the things forgive yourself forgive your parents they probably were young too when they made certain decisions but i think when you have them in your life or when you accept them it does a lot for you yeah yeah and trust me i may get some of those dates wrong because I try not to remember because it's it's sad. So, oh gosh, I hate having uncomfortable conversations. See me holding my fingers. But yeah, Father's Day is around the corner. I want to say Happy Father's Day when it comes. I know I'm going to do another video on Saturday, but I just wanted to get this out of the way. Um, yeah, get your dad something. Get somebody to play the father role. Show them that you appreciate them. And, um, yeah, show love, show appreciation, show gratitude. Thank you so much. I just wanted to get that out of the way because I know it's going to be emotional for me on Father's Day. But, yeah, I got to go. My girls got to go. Take care of yourselves. Love, peace, respect. Remember to put God in everything. Love you. Take care.